Today I get the chance to make amends for the fact I did not review the Inwin A1, which is a Mini ITX chassis that launched four years ago. I'm not going to review it today, that would be ridiculous. Instead, I'm going to take a look at the Inwin A3, which is a micro ATX chassis. You can see there's a certain family resemblance, although the logo on the front has changed. And also the A5, which is an E ATX chassis. So we now have a family of A chassis. One big difference is that the top of the A1 is solid glass, whereas the A3 and the A5 have filtered panels. So there's a chance for some airflow, but those front panels won't help cooling at all. Let's start with a look at the A5. So this tempered glass panel simply pops loose like so. Back panel, similar thing except it's steel rather than glass, no noise deadening. And the filtered panel on the top slides sideways and comes away. Inside the back panel on the back of the motherboard tray we have some drive mounts, thumb screw, and away it comes. The SSD mounts are stamped with the Inwin logo. However, we are clearly looking at the back of the mount and you can see the logo is reversed. The layout of the case is not entirely obvious at first glance. If you look at the expansion slots at the rear for the E80X motherboard, you can see they are conventional, horizontal. So the graphics card will go like so. That's fine, but the power supply does not go either here or here. Instead, it goes at the front of the case Hanging from these mounts, we have a plug at the rear for the mains cable, and we have a pass through, which goes through. That goes into the power supply inside the top of the case. So your power supply is here. If you use a very beefy power supply, that might impinge on the front of the graphics card, and the motherboard, therefore, is in the conventional position in the conventional orientation. Airflow, air comes in from the bottom of the case, exhausts through the roof. We also have a single fan supplied, which is in exhaust at the rear. The front plays no part whatsoever in airflow. If you're using an AIO cooler, that goes in the roof. The power supply that was installed in the front of the case there, Seasonic Focus PX850, and I've now added an MSI Z690 carbon Wi-Fi motherboard, Core i9-12900K, and some Corsair Vengeance DDR5 memory along with a Palette Gaming Pro RTX 3080 graphics card. Obviously there's no CPU cooler in there. We can now get a feel for how this PC would come together. You can also see if you did have an AIO cooler in the floor of the case against the wishes of Inwin, that the hoses would have to come up the side of the graphics card and go to the CPU. You have to wonder whether this clearance is sufficient to allow air to flow from the floor of the case up uh, to the CPU cooler uh, passing along the way past a 250 watt or so graphics card. The hardware certainly goes in the case without any difficulty, but I'm not so much interested in the A5. I want to look at that Micro ATX A3. The A series are all about the compact case. You can get a lot of hardware into a relatively small case. The A5 is an ATX or EATX. It's a mid tower. It's small, but it's not tiny. By contrast, the A3, it's micro ATX, and it looks like a large ITX chassis. Let's take a closer look at the A3. Main glass panel comes off in exactly the same way as the A5, as does the back panel. The front I.O. panel on the top is exactly the same as the A5. We have a power button, two USB 3.0 Type A's, headset jack, and a Type C. Top dust filter, slide sideways to give you access to the top panel and the power supply mounts. On the back of the motherboard tray, we have a single SSD mount rather than the two on the A5. And we remove this cover to give full access to the front. Let's put some hardware inside the A3 and see how that looks in action. The hardware installed motherboard and MSI Mag B550M mortar, micro ATX of course, socket AM4 for AMD. 
processor is this AMD Ryzen 9 5900X. We have some Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory. There's a Sabrent Rocket 4.0 SSD hiding under the heatsink. And the power supply is this Seasonic Focus GX650 watts. So that's a gold rated power supply. I've installed the mounts for this Noctua NH-U12A Chromax Black Cooler. I've had experience of Noctua coolers in the past where you get two mounting brackets for AM4 long brackets like this and then short brackets that go at the top and bottom of the socket. This cooler comes with these brackets and only these brackets for AMD. You get a whole different set of Intel mounts. If I take this uh, cooler and I install it like that, you will see that as you'd expect, the fans are blowing across the case, intaking air from the front, expelling it to the rear, just in front of the rear exhaust fan. Normally that's the right and proper thing to do. In this instance, of course, the air is coming in the bottom of the case, some's going out of the rear, and then you'd be exhausting through the roof. In the Inwin A3, it seems to me that installing that Noctua cooler would be wrong because the airflow is attempting to go around 90 degrees rather than logically going straight up and out. So while this case supports air coolers, I think a 240mm AIO is the obvious way to go. Now we have a couple of little features I haven't yet mentioned. So at the front we have the power supply hanging from these top four mounts. Slacken this screw and there's a little stop that now supports the bottom of the power supply. We have another little bracket which also attaches in this slot here. It's a graphics card support but as I don't have a graphics card installed we'll leave that for the time being. First I'm going to remove the rear fan which is an Inwin Mercury AM120S ARGB and the fan blades are attached to a ring in the periphery so all the rotating part there is one piece and you don't actually have a blade tip gap because it goes right to the edge. The reason for removing the fan from the case is because I've been sent by Inwin a box of three Mercury AM120S's which have been updated. These are the fans that you will expect to get with the A3, A5 or indeed if you buy accessories from the Inwin store. If I take this extension cable from Inwin which has a little lug on the socket side of the connector it will line up with the catch on the plug side. And now we have a good solid ARGB connection. Time to install a cooler. I'm going with this Fantex Glacier 1240MP, which is a 240mm AIO. The fans have no RGB, they're white. We do, however, have RGB on the pump cap. So that cooler will simply go in the roof. A fairly close fit, but there is room to spare just. On with the top panel. And the graphics card, Sapphire Radeon RX 6800 XT. Again, a close fit, but there is space just. The finished PC looks neat and tidy. The RGB is rather smart, and as you can see, I have two additional in-wind fans in the floor of the case, but fear not. I did some testing with the original fan in the rear and then I added these two fans and did some more testing. But I did my usual thing of running a combination of Cinebench R23 and Time Spy Stress Test simultaneously. That gives us a system power draw with this PC of 450 watts at the wall socket. The CPU drawing 145 watts and the GPU about 175 watts. I started by running the fans at 1000 RPM and the pump at 1500 RPM and it sounded like this. Then I increased the fan speed to 1500 RPM and the pump to 2000 RPM sounded like this. Finally, I ran everything flat out, so the case fan running at 2000 RPM, the AIO fans at 2150 RPM, with the pump at 2850 RPM, sounded like this. 
After that, I added the two extra in-wind fans in the floor of the case and went back to the beginning. So we've now got the fans running at 1000 RPM, but five of them this time, and the pump at 1500 RPM sounds like this. Then we have the fans running at 1500 RPM and the pump at 2000 RPM, which sounds like this. And finally, everything's flat out. So the in-wind fans are at 2000 RPM, the AO fans at just about 2200 RPM this time, and the pump at 2850 RPM. And it sounded like this. During the testing, it's been horribly hot and sticky here in the UK. Ambient has been quite consistent, however, at an unfortunate 27.5 degrees. So the figures I'm giving you here are as measured rather than deltas. With the fans running at 1000 RPM, the CPU temperature, 86 degrees. And the graphics card, 73 degrees. Increasing fan speed to 1500 RPM, the CPU temperature dropped to 79 and the GPU to 72. Increasing fan speed to maximum, CPU temperature 74, GPU temperature 69 degrees. Adding the extra case fans and slowing down to 1000 RPM, CPU temperature 88, graphics temperature 75. Increasing the fans to 1500 RPM, CPU temperature 80, graphics temperature 71. And now increasing fans to maximum, CPU temperature 74, graphics temperature 72. It's fairly clear those fans in the floor of the case make very little difference. 74, graphics temperature 72. It's fairly clear those fans in the floor of the case make very little difference. Those temperature figures aren't In fact, it's fairly clear adding fans in the floor of the case hurts CPU and GPU temperatures by one or two degrees, and that's counterintuitive. After all, more fans, more airflow, better, right? Clearly in this case, this is not true. My feeling, and it's only a feeling, is that the close separation between the fans in the floor of the case and the graphics card, we're talking about that much. I suspect that causes turbulence, and turbulent airflow is poor airflow. So, more fans is a step backwards. Those temperature figures are not hugely impressive. Although we don't really expect a compact case to perform particularly well, nonetheless it seemed worth digging in a bit further just to see if we could get to the root of what's going on. That testing I did was last night. It's now the morning and things have cooled down slightly. But whereas yesterday I was able to give you measured temperatures because the horribly hot conditions were very stable, this morning it's been warming up. So I've now had to switch over to deltas to show you the differences between running the case with the glass on, the glass off, and the top panel removed with the glass off to see if we can see where the restriction lies. I'm running the fans at 1500 RPM. 1000 is almost silent, but doesn't perform very well. Flat out seems to perform better, but is too blooming noisy. So 1500 RPM it is. Let's have a quick listen. So glass on. Glass off. Glass off and top panel removed. and the CPU temperatures. So in the original setup, we have a delta of 52 degrees. Removing the glass, the temperature drops to 49 delta, and then removing the top filtered panel drops to 47. Those figures are significant, but they're not really very large. It seems to me that the airflow through the A3 is not choked and horrendous. Instead, it's a simple fact that the case is quite small and the consequence is that airflow suffers. Before I can conclude with my feelings about the A3 and the A5, we have to touch on pricing. Now the fact is that pricing in this day and age is just utterly chaotic. I can be given a price and it means next to nothing. It doesn't mean you can buy the product at that price. But there's a wrinkle with the in-wins, which is we were told when we kicked off this review that the A3 is 95 euros so i thought about 82 pounds maybe add a bit for luck 85 pounds the a5 105 euros 
91 pounds, maybe 95 pounds, so 85 pounds, 95 pounds. It turns out that Inwin doesn't have any distribution in the UK, so any orders will be satisfied from Inwin's own European store and we'll have to pay here in the UK a carriage charge of 23 euros 75. Added to that, if we Brits buy goods from the EU that come to more than 135 pounds, we have to pay VAT to the delivery company. So you get one of those letters from whichever courier they're using, DHL or whoever, saying pay this bill, then you can have your goods. That doesn't speed things up and it adds to the aggravation factor. So the pricing of these cases is going to be more than a hundred pounds once you factor in delivery and there will be some hassle. Shame that, wish to goodness in women could get some UK distribution. So the pros and the cons, pros, neat styling. These cases are all about the looks and in particular these solid front panels which is why the air has to come through the floor after all. If you like this a great deal you should consider these cases. If you're not fussed about that look well there are many other cases on the market. The construction is perfectly decent. The panels snap on and off quite easily. The cases feel solid. Uh, no problems on that front. And they have an open interior. No power supply shroud. Of course the power supply is up top. We know some of our audience really do not like power supply shrouds. Cons. The negatives. The heavily tinted glass panel. Basically if you haven't got RGB inside the case it, it's just black and solid effectively. So RGB lovers, great. If you don't like RGB, a bit peculiar. The thermals are unimpressive. Clearly one solution there is to build a middling PC rather than a high-end PC, but you will not get huge amounts of airflow. And finally, pricing and delivery charges are steep for we Brits. That may well not affect you, but it adds to my woes. Overall, because of the cosmetics and the styling, it's different. I'm going to say that the A3 and the A5, they're an 8 out of 10. They're worth buying. If you don't really care about the looks, then that takes it straight down to a worth considering.